In this video, you're going to learn how to solve trig equations, and we're going to go through six examples together. We're going to talk about how to find the general solution as well as just from 0 to 2 pi. So let's dive into these six examples. We're going to be using the unit circle here, so if you haven't memorized it, uh, it's, it's uh, helpful to know this unit circle or have one handy. Let's take a look at the first example. The first example, 2 cosine x minus 1 equals 0. You can think about this just like you would think about solving a regular algebra equation. But instead of getting the x by itself, think about isolating that particular trig function. In this case, cosine. How can you get the cosine x by itself? Well, thinking about working from the outside in, what I would do is I would add 1 to both sides. So now we're left with 2 cosine x equals 1. And then I would divide both sides by 2 to get that cosine by itself. And so now we're left with cosine of x is equal to 1 half. So you'd go to your unit circle and you'd say, hmm, where is cosine equal to 1 half? Well, remember on the unit circle, the cosine corresponds to the x coordinate. The sine refers to, or corresponds to the y coordinate, and the tangent is the y divided by the x. So in this case, where does the cosine equal 1 half? That's where the x coordinate is 1 half. That's going to be right here at pi over 3 and at 5 pi over 3. Now sometimes when I'm doing these problems, I like to just draw a little sketch for myself. And I'd say, okay, here's pi over 3, and here's 5 pi over 3. And if we were just going once around this unit circle, if the instruction just said, okay, you know, solve this equation from 0 to 2 pi, your answers would just be pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. But if you're here at pi over 3 and you were to go all the way around the unit circle again, you would end up in the same spot and the cosine, that x coordinate, would still be 1 half. So what we can do is we can add multiples of 2 pi. Now your teacher might say 2 pi k or 2 pi n. As long as n is an integer, you're adding a full revolution and you're going to end up at the same spot. Now if n was a negative 1, you'd be going the other direction you would still end up at the same spot. Same thing with 5 pi over 3. You could add multiples of 2 pi n, and so that's going to be your general solution. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, for example number 2, we've got 6 sine squared x minus 3 equals 0. So again, working from the outside in towards this sine function, we want to isolate that. Let's go ahead and add 3 to both sides of the equation. So that gives us 6 sine squared x is equal to 3. Let's divide both sides by 6. And so now we have sine squared x is equal to 1 half if we reduce the fraction. And because it's a sine squared of x, let's take the square root of both sides. Remember when you take the square root of both sides of an equation, you get two answers, plus or minus. The square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 2 is just square root of 2. And then let's go ahead and rationalize this by multiplying the numerator and denominator by the square root of 2. So that gives us 1 times square root of 2 is square root of 2. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is square root of 4, which is just 2. And so now we're looking at where does the sine of x equal to plus or minus the square root 2 over 2. Remember, the sine on the unit circle corresponds to the y-coordinate. So we're saying where is the y-coordinate equal to square root 2 over 2 or negative square root 2 over 2. Looks like it's going to be at four locations here. And let's just go ahead and draw a sketch. So that's going to be at pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. And if the instructions just say, you know, what are the solutions between 0 and 2 pi, once around that unit circle, you would just list those, those angles, pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. Now, if we want to write it as a general solution, what you might notice here is that to go from pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4, we're adding pi over 2, or 90 degrees. And same thing here, we're adding another 90 degrees, another 90 degrees, another 90 degrees. <clears throat> so what you can do, since you just keep adding 90 each time, or pi over 2, you can say that our angle x is equal to pi over 4 plus pi over 2n, where n is an integer. Again, you're just adding 90 to get to the next point on the unit circle, next point, next point, ad infinitum forever. So this would be your general solution. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, for example number three now, we have 2 cosine squared x minus cosine x minus 1 equals 0. So how would we solve this one? Well, you can see this is like a trinomial, like three terms, and we have a quadratic term, this cosine squared term, and like a linear term to the first degree cosine. 
So what you could think about is the factoring this into two binomials. You could even think of this as, like imagine if this was 2x squared minus x minus 1. How would you factor that? Well, in this case, we can see that 2x times 1x gives us a 2x squared. And a negative 1 and a positive 1, that multiplies to negative 1. And then the inside and the outside, 1x and negative 2x, adds up to the middle term. But really, we're dealing with cosine. So let me replace x here with cosine x. So this is going to be 2 cosine x plus 1 times cosine x minus 1 is equal to 0. Now that we have it factored, we can set each factor, each group, equal to 0 and solve. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have 2 cosine x plus 1 equals 0, and cosine x minus 1 equals 0. Here, if we add 1 to both sides, we can see that cosine x is equal to 1. Over here, if we subtract 1 from both sides and divide by 2, we can see cosine is equal to negative 1 half. So going to our unit circle now, let's start with this one. Where does cosine equal 1? Well, cosine is the x-coordinate, and it's going to be 1 just right here at 0. So let's draw a sketch. We'll say basically it's going to be right here, okay, at 0. Or where does cosine equal negative 1 half? That's where, again, where the x-coordinate is negative 1 half. That's going to be here at 2 pi over 3. Or here at 4 pi over 3. And that's it. Now, what's interesting, if we were just saying uh, what's the solution from 0 to 2 pi, we would just list these angles, 0, 2 pi over 3, and 4 pi over 3. But if we want a general solution, what you might notice here is that these are evenly spaced, right? So this is actually 2 pi over 3, another 2 pi over 3, another 2 pi over 3 takes us back to 6 pi over 3, which is 2 pi over 0. So we can write this as a general solution in a more condensed way by saying that x is equal to 2 pi over 3 times n, where n is an element of the set of integers. Okay, that's what the z here represents. So basically, if n is 0, you're going to be right at 0. If n is 1, you're at 2 pi over 3. If n is 2, you're at 4 pi over 3. And if n is 3, you're back to 2 pi, so you're kind of starting over again. So this is like a condensed way of writing our general solution. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, for example number 4 now, we have square root of 3 times cotangent of 3x equals 1. Now, this is what we call a multiple angle type. And I'm trying to show you a variety of different problems in this video. Like we did a factoring one, and we just did some more standard type problems, and now this is a multiple angle one. So here, again, what we're going to do is we're going to try to isolate this cotangent uh, function by itself. So I'm going to start by dividing both sides by square root of 3. And then now we have cotangent of the quantity 3x is equal to, and I'm just going to rationalize this by multiplying the numerator and denominator by square root of 3. So this comes out to square root of 3 over square root of 9, which is just 3. So now what we're going to do is we're going to treat this angle like a group or a chunk. We're going to say cotangent of what angle equals root 3 over 3. Now cotangent is the x-coordinate divided by the y-coordinate. Tangent's y divided by x, cotangent's the reciprocal, it's x over y. And you can see that's going to occur over here at pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Now you might be saying, Mario, how did you know that? Well, see, cotangent, which is 1 half, divided by uh, root 3 over 2, so we're just doing the x over the y. When you divide by a fraction, it's like multiplying by the reciprocal, right? So the 2's are going to cancel, and then we have 1 over root 3, which is what we started with right here. Also over here in the third quadrant, you can see the x and the y are the same, and they're also the same sign. They're both negative. So a negative divided by negative will also give you a positive root 3 over 3. So if I was to draw a sketch here, I'd see that on my unit circle here at pi over 3 and five, uh, sorry, 4 pi over 3, Notice how these are across from each other. They're like a diameter. They're like 180 degrees apart, or you could say pi radians apart. So if I was to write a general solution here, we actually solve for 3x. So what we have is 3x is equal to pi over 3 plus, we're adding 180 degrees or pi radians, times n. So if you keep adding pi, you're here, another pi, you're here, another pi. So you keep going halfway around that unit circle, and you're ending up at one of these two points 
where cotangent's equal to root three over three. But see, the thing is we don't want three x, we just want one x. So let's go ahead and divide everything by three, left and right sides of the equation to keep this balanced. And that's gonna give us x equals pi over nine plus pi over three n. Now this is our general solution where n is an integer, but if the instruction said, I, you know, you just want the answers from zero to two pi, what I would do is I'd start by putting in values for n. Now pi over three is like three pi over nine, okay? So what we could do is we could say, well, when n is zero, we have pi over nine. When n is one, that's gonna be pi over nine plus three pi over nine, which is four pi over nine. When n is two, that's six pi over nine plus one pi over nine is seven pi over nine. When n is three, that's nine pi over nine plus one pi over nine is 10 pi over nine. You can see we're keep adding three to the numerator here. So if I follow that pattern, 13 pi over nine, 16 pi over nine, 19 pi over nine, you can see 19 pi over nine is actually more than two pi. So that's not gonna be from zero to two pi. So if we, they just ask from zero to two pi, these would be your angles, or if you want a general solution, this is your general solution. Let's take a look at another example. Now, before we dive into example number five, you might be saying, Mario, I, I noticed there's something on your shirt there, and I don't know if you can see this here, but uh, I've got these unit circle shirt on today just to kind of in honor of this video. And if you're interested in getting a, a t-shirt like this, I have these for sale on my Teespring uh, store, and I'll put a link in the description below. So check that out if you want to get one of these cool uh, fun math t-shirts. But let's try number five now. So for number five, we're trying to get the secant function by itself on one side of the equation. So instead of multiplying by square root of three, let's divide both sides by square root of three. Okay, so now we have secant of x divided by two. Now secant, you know from your trig identities, is the reciprocal of cosine. So we could write this as secant is the same as one over cosine of x divided by two. Uh, equals two divided by root three. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the reciprocal of both sides of this equation. So when I flip this over, cosine divided by one is just gonna be cosine. So we have cosine of the angle x divided by two is equal to the reciprocal of the right side, which is equal to square root three over two. Now, like just like we did in the last example, we're gonna treat this quantity here, this angle, like a group or a chunk. We're gonna say cosine of what? is equal to square root three over two. Now, on the unit circle, cosine is the x-coordinate, right? So where is the x-coordinate root three over two? That's gonna be here at pi over six and here at 11 pi over six. So what I normally do is I, I draw a little sketch like this on my side of my paper. I'd say right here at pi over six and 11 pi over six. Now you can see these are not across from each other, so it's not like I can do that little trick where I'm just adding pi n, uh, and there's not like a, they're not evenly spaced, I guess you could say. So what I would do to write this as a general solution is I would say x over two, remember we treated this like a group, is equal to pi over six plus two pi n, meaning we're adding 360 degrees, we're going all the way around that unit circle to get back into the same position where that cosine is equal to root three over two. We can also do the same thing with 11 pi over six. We can add two pi or multiples of two pi to get back to this same spot where cosine is equal to root three over two. But keep in mind, we're not solving for x divided by two, we just wanna solve for x. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply both sides of the equation by two. And so that's gonna give us uh, x equals two pi over six, which is pi over three, plus four pi n, and 11 pi over three, actually 22 pi over six, but it reduces to 11 pi over three, right? Plus four pi n, and that's our general solution. Now, if it said just from zero to two pi, if we put zero in for n, pi over three would be one of our answers. Or if we put one in, that's gonna be four pi plus pi over three, but you can see four pi plus pi over three is greater than two pi, so that's not gonna work. If we put zero here, we get 11 pi over three. And now 11 pi over three, is that between zero and two pi? Well, this is actually three and two thirds pi, so that's not between zero and two pi. So really, in this case, there's only one answer from zero to two pi, and that's gonna be when x is pi over three. 
So that's it uh, between zero to two pi, and this is your general solution, and you got it. Let's take a look at one more example. Okay, let's take a look at example number six. And if you want more practice at the end of this video, I'll have a link to another video that I did previously working with solving trig equations. Uh, but let's look for number six. So number six, we have tangent squared x minus tangent x minus two equals zero. So notice we have a trinomial, three terms, and let's see if we can factor this trinomial into two binomials. So we can see that tangent times tangent is gonna give us tangent squared. What two numbers multiply to negative two but add to negative one? That's gonna be negative two and positive one. So you can see the inside one tangent x and the outside negative two tangent x adds up to our middle term negative one tangent x. Now that we have it factored, let's set each factor equal to zero and solve. So we're gonna say tangent of x plus one equals zero and tangent of x minus two equals zero. Subtract one from both sides. So you can see tangent x equals negative one, add two to both sides, you can see tangent of x is equal to two. Now on the unit circle, we know where tangent's equal to negative one. That's gonna be where the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate is equal to negative one. So that would uh, occur right here at three pi over four, because you can see that root two over two divided by negative root two over two is negative one. Anything divided by itself is one, but a positive divided by a negative is a negative one. And it also occurs over here at seven pi over four. So Let's draw a little sketch here. So basically we're looking at three pi over four and seven pi over four. And notice that they're across from each other on that unit circle. So if we we're gonna write a general solution, we could say x equals three pi over four plus pi n, where n is an integer, right? So if you keep adding pi, you're going like a half revolution. Over here though, we don't know where tangent is equal to two. So we're gonna to have to go to our calculator and make sure your mode is in radians. Okay, I'll just check mine is in radians. And I'm gonna do the tangent inverse now. So I'm gonna say x is equal to the tangent inverse of two. And on your calculator, you might have to press your second key. So second tangent inverse of two, I'm getting 1.11. Now the calculator is only gonna give you one answer. 1.11 radians Pi over two, pi is 3.14 divided by two, so this is about 1.57. 1.11 would be somewhere here in the first quadrant. So if we were to draw a sketch, that's gonna be somewhere right, I'll just say right about here approximately, 1.11. But tangent is positive in the first quadrant and in the third quadrant. Because remember, tangent's y over x. And if they're both negative, a negative divided by negative is a positive. So what we can do is we can take this reference angle, okay, or this reference triangle, and draw that same angle with the x-axis in the third quadrant. So what I could do is, if I wanted to write this as a general solution, I could say, hmm, these are 180 degrees apart, okay, see how that's like a diameter? So I could say 1.11 plus pi n, meaning I'm just adding pi or 3.14 to get to the next one, next one, you know, ad infinitum. So this would be your general solution, both of these, but if it said just from zero to two pi, you could say three pi over four, and we said seven pi over four, and then over here we said 1.11, and what's 1.11 plus pi? The pi is about 3.14, so it'd be about 4.25, and those would be your answers from zero to two pi, but these would be your, your general solution. So, Great job if you're able to follow this video and these six examples. If you want more practice, follow me over to that video right there that I did previously talking about how to solve trig equations, and I'll see you over in that video.